What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today we're going to go over a topic that I don't feel gets addressed enough in personal finance in general and I definitely don't address it that much on this channel. This is about your money habits. What you do with your personal finances, how you think about it, how you treat it. We're going to talk about all of that stuff. But the main point I want to bring home is this. You must evolve with it as time goes on, as your financial situation changes. You cannot do this the same way for years and years and years. That's not how you grow. And as a matter of fact, right before I turned this camera on just now, I was really thinking about what my biggest challenge was when it came to personal finances. And as I think about it, yeah, I might've had some mistakes here and there, but for the most part, it was mainly mindset stuff. It wasn't so much the application. Saving money was not like a difficult thing to do. Investing was not a difficult thing to do. Paying off debt, stuff like that did not come off as challenging, but the mindset is what really slows people down and it definitely slowed me down in my own financial journey as well so that's what we're going to talk about today and the reason this topic is so important is because it would be a shame if your financial situation drastically changed and you didn't even know what to do about it and when i say drastic change i mean in a positive way like you have accumulated more than you ever expected you're making more money than ever expected but you got to know what to do with that money so i'll give you a quick example of my own personal experiences right the way I handle my money now is night and day compared to how I used to handle my money back when I was 21, 22, or even 23 years old, 26 right now. And the budget I used to do was the 50, 30, 20 budget, which I think is a really good budget, especially if you're just starting off. And I used to penny pinch like crazy. I lived an incredibly boring lifestyle. Now, of course, a lot of that was just me going to and from work because I worked an incredible amount of hours back then. But when I was home, I really didn't do much of anything. And this was after I saw my financial situation for what it was. And I was like, man, I can't be doing what I'm doing now. I can't be eating out like I'm doing because I'm missing out on hundreds of dollars every single month, which is thousands of dollars a year, right? And then I thought about how much debt I owed, you know, student loans. I didn't have any credit card debt back then because back then I knew, hey, you better not overspend on your credit cards to where you can't pay it back. Then you really going to be looking crazy. So I, I made sure not to get in the credit card debt. But what I'm saying is I was like extra, extra careful. Like I wanted to invest in myself. Right. But at that point in life, I wouldn't buy books and books were only like you know, the books I wanted at the time. They were only like twenty, thirty dollars, some even like ten dollars. And it was all because I wanted to reach a savings goal. And at the time, I think I just wanted to save like ten thousand dollars in my savings account. Right. And I only had like a little over two thousand dollars in my savings account. So I felt like I was kind of like walking on eggshells. I felt like if anything went wrong, I would be dead broke. And I wasn't wrong about that because it was actually true. But the one thing I noticed now that I'm looking back on that is what I didn't realize was after I reached that goal of $10,000, I went for my next goal, which was $20,000. And I kept the exact same lifestyle. And this was with overtime and everything. Like I continued to penny pinch and I penny pinched very, very aggressively. I really wouldn't recommend because it kind of gives you this miserable feeling about your lifestyle. Like it makes you feel like you have money, but you really don't have things or experiences and it kind of makes you wonder like what am i missing out on and then you know what i started doing i started slipping back into the habits i had before i really buckled down and disciplined myself financially which was things like eating out or going to the store and buying stuff that i wanted i was really into like jackets like you know the polo jackets polo shirts i like my jordans you know what i'm saying i don't like them so much now but back then i really really liked them dress shoes suits like i, I like to be fresh so those are the types of things I spent money on and what I noticed from that was I actually had a lot of disposable income that I could have been investing but at that time you really couldn't pay me or talk me into investing in nothing I was just that skeptical and I had people like my, my grandfather he was telling me he was like yeah why don't you just invest in stocks like just look up the ones that are good invest in them for the long term and you'll be good like I, I never even thought of that at that time. I was like, nah, that's, that's the slow way to do it. I, I was trying to, you know what I'm saying? Even though I was penny pinching and saving super slow, I knew I wanted to amass a certain amount of wealth at a very young age, at least by age 30. But I was thinking going the stocks route would take 
30 to 40 years to actually get anything out of. But that I didn't do my research, so I didn't know any better back then. I wanted to build wealth and get rich, you know what I'm saying, the fast way. And after watching about 30, 40, 50 YouTube videos, you know, 10 to 20 minutes each, I think I had it all figured out. That was what I thought. <laughs> I thought I had it all figured out. But basically they were saying stuff like, you've got to invest in yourself. You know, you've got to invest in your future. Very similar to what I'm telling you now, but I just, I form it in a different way than it was given to me because the way it was given to me was in a very like butterfly rainbows approach, like invest in yourself today and be a millionaire tomorrow. Like that's the type of stuff I was looking. Passive income, make 10K in your sleep from now on just by selling this product on Amazon, stuff like that, right? And as I've said many times before, I also got into an MLM and all these other things. So what I'm saying is once I reached my savings goals, that was when I was like, you know what? I need to start investing in myself because I don't want to just keep the same income. Like, because pretty much my income stayed the same for the first like year and a half when I was at my previous job, when I was at my first job. But I got a stupid amount of overtime. And by stupid, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the hours were stupid. The money was eh. It was like 80 something K, which was good, you know, for 21, 22 years old. But like at the same time, I feel like at a 60K salary and I'm only getting 20K more a year and I'm working dumb amounts of overtime. I, I just feel like those numbers don't really add up. Like when you work every day, it really doesn't allow time for doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, things like that. So if you neglect your health and then your health just so happens to decline in any way, it could be a very minor or major way. Either way, you're gonna have to pay up something to go see somebody especially if it requires surgery. Keep that in mind throughout this video. So anyway, back to what I was saying about the investing in the MLM stuff. I wasted a lot of money, but I will say this, I learned a lot in the process. So in the grand scheme of things, the money wasn't wasted. The time wasn't wasted either. Could I have been doing something else? Yeah, but I, I would have been doing that something else without the knowledge that I gained from the MLM from watching all those YouTube videos and things of that nature. And I really think that if I didn't combine those two things, I'm not really sure if I would know what I know now to the point where I can go and invest and know I'm making a safe investment. You see, even though I didn't know what the heck I was doing, something in me knew that I had to move forward and I had to evolve if I was gonna change my financial situation even more. Cause first the goal was just graduate out of college, get a decent paying job, cool, did that. Now what's next? Make more money within that job, cool, did that, over time. But now I was like, nah, I wanna make like sustainably more income at work but without the overtime. So as I was working on that, I was like, but what can I do in the meantime outside of work whenever I did have time outside of work to actually build upon my income? And that was stuff like the mini business I created when I was teaching drum lessons, because y'all know I, I drummed all the way throughout college, high school, all that good stuff, played at the Carolina Panthers game. That's more than enough credibility to build a customer base around any type of instrument that you can think of. And that's exactly what I did. It was a small customer base, but hey, I made money doing it. And then with that money, I was still penny pinching it though. Like I knew I had to evolve in some way, but I really wasn't doing what I should have been doing with the extra money. Like I was, I literally took it in cash form and I kept it in the shoe box in my room. And whenever it hit a certain amount, like I think it hit like every time it hit $500, that was when I would go ahead and do something with like, put it in the bank or something like that. And what I did was I just put it on top of my savings, which I really, in the grand scheme of things, didn't need to do at that time, but that's what I did though. And from there, I was thinking of more ways. I was like, I have to think of something more passive. And that was when the MLM thing approached me, the, the business opportunity, so to speak, approached me. And it was presented as it was a passive income thing, which it's really not. Uh, I think you should really educate yourself on what passive income actually means and how to actually accumulate it because there's not too many things in this world that are truly passive. But nonetheless, I pursued passive income because I knew that would be yet another way to evolve within my financial situation. And as the years went on, as I got wiser, as I got smarter, as I recognized what were good financial opportunities and which ones were bad, that's just what happened as my knowledge base built. I just kept building onto it. I kept educating myself. I kept reading books. I kept listening to people who were smarter and richer than me, things of that nature. I went to conferences. I did a lot of stuff and I got looked at like I was crazy for doing it. You know what I'm saying? But I really didn't care what anybody else think. I, I, I'm the type of person, you are not going to see me care too much about what other people think. I don't think you can get anywhere in life 
that is notable if you're over here worried about what someone else is thinking about you. So you have to evolve. And what that turned into was building passive income, doing something that doesn't cost nearly as much up front. And you can actually buy courses. So like, for example, for me, mine was YouTube. Like I really wanted to do YouTube because I was passionate about video because I loved the concept that, you know what? I can't be everywhere at once. I wish I could talk in front of people and inspire them and motivate them and give them information that I wish I had when I was that where they're at in life, but I can't do that physically. It is not possible right now, especially not working all of these out. And what I did was I just started posting videos on Facebook and like I was just putting them out there. I really didn't care. I just wanted to put them out there. I was going through something at the time. I wanted to help somebody else get through whatever they were going through through my videos or at least make them feel a little bit better. And as traction built, like people really, really liked them. Even people who I thought couldn't stand me, you know what I'm saying? Actually, it, it exceeded my expectations. Like I was, keep in mind, I was extremely shy and awkward in front of a camera at that time. So like I wasn't even expecting, you know, to have anything positive or extremely positive said under my videos. But actually it was received very well and it did resonate with a lot of people. Just the fact that I had the confidence and the nerve to put myself out there like that, that is the habit that paid me dividends over the years and that translated to youtube and that translated to passive income but not before buying a bunch of courses on how the heck youtube is even supposed to work could i have saved that money absolutely i could have but i didn't because i knew the investment was going to eventually pay off now the amount of money i was paying those courses for now the amount of money that i was paying for those courses is what i'm getting paid every single month just off of the adsense revenue alone so what I'm saying is I kind of went from a complete employee mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset all in one. And I'm not saying you have to have an entrepreneurial mindset. I'm just saying you have to evolve your way of thinking about your money. And I'll get into some more practical ways in just a second, but I want to say this real quick. And once I started getting ad revenue from YouTube, I had to understand, you know, if YouTube just goes away tomorrow, I'm not going to be making any money from YouTube. That's going to be an income stream cut right off the bat. So what can I do to retain my audience in other places? Hmm, maybe I should build an Instagram following, which by the way, I'm still working on that. Y'all can hit me up on Instagram if y'all want to. That's why I link it in every single video. But anyway, I was also like, what if I made a website? What if I made a financial coaching business where it's a recording on Zoom where I'm showing them how to get to certain places financially and they're able to keep that recording and I'm able to make custom worksheets and custom material for them specifically on how to navigate through their specific financial situation. What if I made a Patreon? What if I wrote a book? I've done all that by the way, just saying. And so these are ways to increase income through the network that I'm building on YouTube. <clears throat> if I was too scared to invest in myself or too scared to put myself out there, I would have never evolved. And I still have a super long way to go. I'm just telling you what I was thinking about today. I was just like, man, I need to talk about this. I need to talk about how we need, how we all need to evolve financially with our money habits, with everything we do. And that's in every aspect of your life, physically, spiritually, relationally, financially, everything. And so I say all that to put this into perspective. I've made a ton of frugal living videos on this channel and it's actually part of how this channel ever caught any kind of traction anyway because at first I was making random videos, didn't really know which direction I was going, personal growth or personal finance, decided to put them together. But a lot of my finance videos weren't hitting and I wasn't being as relatable as I could have been. Then I got a coach, again, investing in myself. It was, I think I paid like $1,200 for a coach. Really, really good, by the way. Shout out Camille Colazzo. She has a YouTube channel. She has a YouTube channel as well, and she helped me build what I've built today. But anyway, I made Frugal Living videos, and Frugal Living is all about minimizing the amount of money you spend, you know, living a minimalist type of lifestyle, not having to spend on everything. But after a while of making those videos, I was like, you know, I'm not really feeling this because it really doesn't line up with how my actual life is. Like, sure, these are things that I used to do. And if you look at my frugal living videos, I speak in past tense a lot because it's not necessarily what I do today, like right now. Like at first, my form of frugal living was much like what I just said when I was 21, 22, 23 years old, where I was penny pension. I really didn't want to spend too much. You didn't really see or hear me talk about investing that much. And I did invest back then, don't get me wrong, but it was just in a different way than I invest today.
and I was very like tiptoey around the idea of investing anyway until I got into that MLM, which is another story for another day because they got me really fired up and, and I thought I was going to make crazy passive income for the rest of my life just based off of that one thing, which is definitely not the case. But nonetheless, you know, I had to evolve from that. And so what I'm saying is I had to realize, Reggie, you've actually evolved from that place you were once in. So so maybe instead of just talking about frugal living in the sense that everyone else already knows about, and it was popular now. I mean, for some reason around COVID time, it was a really popular thing because everyone wanted to save money. You know, everyone wanted to in improve their financial situation because they're like, oh, crap. Maybe I'm not as prepared as I think I am. Maybe I don't have the emergency fund that I should have had. Maybe I'm not making the amount of money I should be making. A lot of people got their salaries cut, furloughed, 401k stopped contributing. A lot of stuff happened in 2020. And I understood that and I empathized with that. So I went ahead and put my content out there around that. And it was based around a lot of things that I used to do. And it was also based around a lot of realizations that I had when I was a little younger and how I tightened up to fix that. But the idea is once you fix your financial situation and you get further, that is the point where evolution must take place. Hey, I hope somebody writes that down. That is a dope quote. I think I think that should be quoted. I'm gonna write that in my next book. But anyway, I was like, I don't live like this anymore. I don't like, like right now, I can eat out every single day of the week and my bank account not notice a difference. Compared to back then, it would have been a, a big, big difference. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm, I very much so, like I very much so out earn my past self. And it's, that's by design. That was by the plan that I set for myself. That was by the goals that I set for myself and the plans of how I was going to get there. So basically what I'm saying is I planned out how I would evolve without even necessarily realizing that I was mapping that out this whole time. And so now it's not so much, you have to cook every single meal. You have to use the absolute cheapest ingredients you can find from the grocery store. It's not like that anymore. Because the whole point to build those habits at an earlier stage in life is so that when you do get the money, you have the discipline and you know how to keep the money. But also, you got to understand, okay, now I can do different things. Now, if I straight up don't have time to cook because I need to do something that's going to add value to the world and add value to the people who are watching this video that can then bring more income into my life and their lives, it's more valuable to save that time. So I might go grab something. And I'm not talking about no McDonald's. I'm talking about grab something that's actually good for you and tastes good. That's just an example. But that's what I'm saying. Like You think of ways to actually buy your time back. You know, I usually would have saved this $1,500 that I just have lying around at the end of this month, but now it's going to go into the stock market because I know that's going to build more opportunities for me and my family. Another example, you ever notice how on the TV shows, whenever somebody is obviously rich or a family is obviously wealthy and you see that they have someone around the house cleaning for them, it's because they know the investment of getting a cleaning service within their house is much worth it because now they have time to do what it is that they do. Whether that's being with the family, whether that's business stuff, either way, it's adding value to the family. It's adding either quality time or it's investing time outside of the family to then bring more benefits for the family. These are examples. Now, me personally, I have a one bedroom apartment. I don't need somebody to clean my place for me. Like I'm good. But I'm saying like if I lived in a mansion or something, if I lived in a bigger place, I might consider the idea that I should have someone clean for me, maybe even cook for me. Cause I look straight up. I don't be having the time to cook all the time. Sometimes I make time, but is it necessary? Because you also have to think about the opportunity cost. If I spend an hour or two meal prepping for the whole week, what else could that energy and time have been spent toward that could have brought me more than the money I saved just from cooking for those few hours? You get what I'm saying? That's the way that I think now. I really think about the future, and that's why when I start creating my frugal living content, I started thinking about, well, you know, what if I just redefine the definition of frugal living to doing for the future? It doesn't just have to be penny pinching or saving money or being quote unquote cheap. That's why my first ever fruit living video had the word cheap in front of the thumbnail with a bunch of question marks because it's like, is it really cheap? I wanted to challenge that idea. And as I challenged that idea with a few frugal living videos, it became something a little more than that. It became, I want to redefine 
what frugal living means because you can watch a bunch of frugal living videos on YouTube, but what if you did the frugal living, you had the discipline, you learned how to automate your savings account like I tell all of y'all to do every single time. That's the ultimate way to be frugal. So you don't even have to really think about it. So therefore, it's taking the discipline out of the equation. But what if you took those ideologies and once you made more money, it's like, okay, cool. I know how to be frugal. I'm going to be frugal with X amount of money, but I'm going to invest with X amount of money. I'm going to keep my lifestyle the same to avoid lifestyle creep and lifestyle inflation. With this excess of money that I'm able to save because I'm making more now, I'm going to invest in this because I know it's going to bring me forth even more money in the future. That's, that's the conversation I think we need to have more often. You know, everyone has the goal of getting out of debt, right? But what if after you got out of the debt, what if after you got to your savings goals, now you evolve? So now what's next? Because what we don't want to do is get back into debt or get back into a situation where we have to save the same amount of money that we just got finished saving. We want to be smart with this and think for the future. Okay, I got this saved. I got this debt paid off. Now what's next? That's all I want to say. I just want to challenge you to evolve as your personal finances do. Like right now, you might be in a situation where you're making less than what you want to be making, where your rent is high. Maybe you didn't study about the cost of living and things of that nature in comparison to how much you're making, which I made that mistake and a lot of people make that mistake. It is a very human mistake to make, but as you learn the information, pass that down to generation. As you understand where you need to evolve that, pass that information on because you don't have to keep living the exact same way. You can continue to create opportunities for yourself. And sometimes you might need to hire certain people to do certain things. Like for example, if you own a house, Maybe you don't have the time to cut your grass. Maybe you wanna hire someone. Back in the day before you moved in that house, maybe you couldn't do it. Or maybe even when you first moved into the house, you couldn't afford to do it, but maybe you got a few raises. Maybe you have a side business going on or some type of side income, you know what I mean, coming in. And, and now maybe you're able to then buy yourself that time to go do something else that's gonna bring you even more money in the future. That, my friend, is the definition of financial evolution, and we've all got to do it. Those are the thoughts I want to leave you with. Anyway, my book is coming out very, very soon, August 14th. I'm going to definitely uh, plaster it all over every single bit of social media I have. I don't care if I just have one follower. Like, I'm going to put it everywhere. I want y'all to follow me on other platforms, though. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Patreon. And I, I give a lot of game on Patreon. It's really slept on, I think. A lot more people should definitely follow me on there, but also I gotta do a better job of actually promoting my Patreon page. So I haven't been doing that in a while, so I will get better with that. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.